Today we're going to be talking on the subject of forgiveness and forgiveness is uh, one of the things that we need to do and yet we find so hard. But yet let's go and have a look and see what Jesus has to say about this matter. And we're going to go to Matthew chapter 18 and we're going to read verses 15 to 22 and if you have your Bibles with you, follow along with me. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, and go and tell him his fault, between thee and him alone, if he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it to the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And again I say unto thee, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me? And I forgive him till seven times? Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times times seven. Today I'm going to talk to you about the need for forgiveness. And Jesus said, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive others that trespass against us, is what he taught his disciples. And you can read that in Matthew 6 verse 12, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Also in Luke 14, Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. Now, there's a moral principle here that we need to take notice of. Study this verse order, and you will see that we need to have our sins first forgiven before we can be in a position to forgive, uh, forgive others that sin against us. A doctor or a nurse simply cannot treat a patient's open wound with dirty hands. And that is why we have 1 John 1, which says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we sin against someone, then we owe that person an apology. You know, we are actually in debt to him or her. However, if they sin against you, then they are in debt to you. They owe you an apology. Notice what Jesus says here. Even if they sin against you, you are to forgive them, no matter how hard that may be for us to do. You know, Jesus was hanging on the cross in absolute agony, yet he followed up on the example he set us for uttering the following words, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. If we claim to be followers and disciples of Jesus, then this applies to us as well today. If I have to forgive someone, it means of necessity that that person has or has done something to me at some time or other that has hurt me very, very deeply. Now, forgiveness means that no hate or malice must be present in, the, in my heart when I do so. Hatred is one of the fruit of the world. And Jesus said that we must forgive our enemies as well. It is not that easy, but we have to do so. To be in your closet, in your privacy, your place of prayer, is an easy way out of asking forgiveness of the Father. You know, but to go personally and ask forgiveness of someone is one of the most hardest things in the world to do. Do you agree with me? It takes the utmost courage, for instance, to go to your firm 
and tell them that you stole something from them. You stand before your superior and the words do not want to come out. Your heart is beating ten to the dozen and you are shaking like a leaf. Very few people are able to do this, but God will give you strength if you ask Him. He will also give you the strength to take the consequences of your deeds. In God's eyes, the result of sin requires drastic action. To man, the most drastic punishment is the loss of everlasting life with God. And the person who dies in sin without God's forgiveness and without Jesus as his Savior has absolutely no second chance. We read in Hebrews 9 verse 27 as it says, And it is appointed unto men once to die, and after this, the judgment. Have you asked God for his forgiveness for your sins? Do you know if tomorrow is going to be your last day or not? You know you take insurance policies out on your life, but I'll ask you a much more important question today. Have you taken out a policy on your soul? If you have, do you know that it can elapse if you do not keep up the payments as it were? I ask you again, have you come to God and asked for His forgiveness? Do not say that you have not been warned. To receive forgiveness means that it first has to be asked for, and that with a humble and sincere heart. Remember, you can deceive people with your intentions, but you can never de deceive God. You have to go on your knees. For you to receive forgiveness means that you first have to forgive your brother or sister in Christ, even if you have to do it 70 times, 7 times a day, every day. Christ himself asked God to forgive those who had put him on the cross. If even he could do that, then who are we to do otherwise? Forgiveness brings promises to the Christian. We are made clean. We are washed by the and shed the shed blood of the cross. Our sins are not remembered anymore by God. And one Thessalonians five verse twenty three tells us that we will preserve blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Forgiveness is an important part of the act of salvation. Forgiveness, without forgiveness, we will be in constant spiritual hobos unwashed, dirty, clothed in garments soiled by the world. And I close with an allegory. A person who is dirty needs a wash basin to wash in. My next talk, talk we'll say something about this when we look at the provision of salvation provided by Jesus Christ. May you be blessed by this talk today. And until we meet again next time, the Lord be with you, bless you, and keep you. Shalom.